Hey, what's up everybody? So listen, this video here is for anybody who is, you know, a real estate agent, if you're a buyer, if you're a seller, um, it's for really anybody who is specifically interested in the urban markets of Toronto and how um, I think uh, people are going to be uh, real estating or transacting or sort of being uh, now and into the future. You know, this is not just a new uh, a temporary thing. It's it's a it, this is a way of life that we're going to be living for a while, and it's going to be affecting how people operate. So, in this video and in the post that you are reading, either above or below this, if you're on Facebook, I can't fit it all, all on Instagram, but it will be at springteam.ca, the springteam.ca. So you can look at the full write up there. We're going to talk about real estate reporting, how it's presented to us in the media. We're going to talk about what a buyer is to expect, what a seller is to expect, and we're going to talk about pre-construction and a few other things. Um, I'll do my best to keep it as short as possible. Um, and again, if you miss anything, give me a call, 416-434-1511, or text and we can go over stuff. So um, generally, as I've said many, many times, it's going to become much more important for main media outlets to stay relevant, that is, to start talking about the urban market specifically and other spe markets very specifically and not just GTA as a whole. When the Toronto Real Estate Board releases these numbers, every media outlet takes it and they talk about it, the general big picture numbers, which mean really nothing to the urban dweller, seller, enthusiast, or buyer. So what we're gonna see much more importance put on is that day-to-day, week-to-week information that people like me have been putting out for a very long time that is incredibly relevant to people living in the specific urban communities that are affected very differently than other communities, just not even that far away from the core. Um, so it's very, very specific that you dig into those to that, to that information. The day-to-day, week-to-week numbers is what people should be and will be talking about, not month-over-month -month figures that are generally dated by about a week by the time they're even posted. So the urban buyer will probably start to view less homes and they're going to make quicker buying decisions going forward. So you may also have a little bit of breathing room when you find that property that you want. Right now you're standing in a property and at any given time your agent could get a notification saying that there's a, a preemptive offer or a bully offer as I don't like to use those words because the word bully just kind of adds to the unnecessary drama and emotion of the whole thing so I tend to avoid uh, using words like that. Um, so back to quickly about talking about making quicker decisions and seeing less homes. It used to be normal to just go open housing and just seeing everything that's available just because you're curious. That's going to stop. Open houses in general are probably going to stop happening because they're generally not that useful in selling a property. They're a pain in the ass for the seller if they happen to be living there. They're really great to help a real estate agent generate new local business, but really I have never seen an open house sell a property. We're going to see a lot less buyers just open house hopping, doing a lot more open house hunting on, or sorry, a property hunting online. So you better hope that there are listings that have the 3D um, modeling and all that stuff to allow buyers to really dig deep into the property. Buyers are going to be having deeper and longer conversations with their agents before they go out and look for properties. Right now, we kind of get to know each other while we're looking for properties. That's now going to be a thing that's happening like this, face to face. You know, and it, I don't like to use, just like my friend Gio, he's really important. He really drilled home the fact that words matter. And I really do agree with him. This isn't virtual. We may not be face to face, but this is a real face to face conversation that we're having. If you're staring at me, there's nothing virtual about it. We are here having this conversation and it can be just as, you know, valuable and important and effective with a buyer or seller this way. So this is going to continue to happen even after any sort of lockdown um, order is, is relieved, which is we're starting to slowly see that happening. Um, one thing that I want to make sure people are understanding is nobody's buying anything full on sight unseen. People are making offers conditional on viewing the property. That's for sure. You know, they're making the offer, but they're not firming up and committing to that purchase until they walk into that property and see it and touch it and feel it. We're a few generations away from right people regularly buying res resale properties sight unseen. So unless the only time somebody I've seen somebody buy a property without even walking into it was a condo that was way underlisted and the deal was just too good to pass up. So the listing agent got a phone call, first call, offer, done. Um, you're getting sight unseen firm sales with incredible deals, not with a typical property. So that was not something that's gonna be happening uh, going forward. Buyers are going to demand highly specialized local 
agents. The knowing the ins and outs of the community is going to be even more important now, especially when you can't necessarily take the time to do that yourself dropping into all these places and kind of getting a true feel for a community. So you're going to have to rely on that local intelligence that your chosen professional has acquired um, over however many years of selling in a very specific location. Um, a lot more sales will happen off of the MLS. People are really worried about having all these people trips through their home. They're going to be leaning on their listing agent to see if they can find that buyer locally without having to be openly on the market and having to deal with all these calls and people walking through. They truly are concerned about their health and their safety. So, so that's something that's you know drives home that local professional even more like right now if you called me and you asked me you know what's available for sale in the neighborhood i can tell you there are 22 properties available on the mls right now but there are another 12 that we know are either coming to market or are exclusively for sale so that kind of stuff the network of your local professional really really matters that's how a lot of great deals are getting done right now so as a seller you'd better make sure the agent that you're hiring is completely comfortable in the digital space. So they have a team around them that's comfortable in the digital space. They must be putting out 3D online experiences, full high res photos and professionally measured floor plans for every listing, whether it be a house or a condo. I can't believe that in 2020, the majority of listings do not have professionally measured floor plans, 3D immersive experiences and high resolution photos. It's insane that people get hired um, uh, without those things. So that's going to be a must. I've been doing that since 2013. It's a super important way to get a potential buyer to connect with your property from not being in your actual property, from anywhere in the world. Um, so that's, that's one thing. So that marketing and the digital exposure is going to be absolutely key. Um, the one really important thing, our urban markets have been on fire for a very long time. A house that sells today, the exact same house will sell tomorrow for a certain percentage more. Those week over week, day over day gains are now gone. They're not, they're certainly not gone forever because once we're fully back out into, into the world or once we're completely comfortable with the way things are, there is going to be another spike in urban Toronto prices. There is. We're just not seeing enough listing activity or enough new, new starts for that to not be an inevitable thing. That's going to be a thing. We just don't know when. Um, but right now, your house is not going to sell for more than the previous one sold for. Maybe it'll sell for a fraction less, but that's not a down. It's just, it's, it's, it's just kind of flat. And our sales will likely be flat without any major increases or decreases for a fairly long time. So make sure you have that expectation managed. Um, so pre-construction condos is a whole different world right now. Believe it or not, there's still a ton of pre-construction sales activity in terms of selling inventory that is in projects that have already launched. All the new launches that were supposed to launch this spring have pushed out to fall. So the fall is going to see a ton of launches. Now, the one downside to this right now, if anybody has bought pre-construction over the past few years, let's say the past two years, and you're closing now or into early 2021, the rental market sucks right now. We're seeing rentals as low as $3.20 a square foot. Um, you know, for example, that's like $2,500 for a 754 square foot, uh, two bedroom, two bathroom, including parking and a locker. Like that should be up to three grand a month. It's so, like we should have seen rental prices at $4 per square foot plus right now. Um, and that's just not a thing. So you are going to be probably eating some monthly negative cash flow if you have any sort of investment coming uh, to term right now, uh, ready for a tenant. There are, there's, so much product on the market. Rental market is not exciting at the moment for a uh, landlord looking for a new uh, tenant. Um, with pre-construction, I see buy it now uh, becoming a thing. You're gonna go to a website, click buy it now, put your credit card in, which provides the first $5,000 de deposit for that purchase. That's been a thing, you know, the folks at Buzz Buzz Home um, have been trying to do that for a while. Um, but I feel like now is the time where things like that are gonna be a thing because think about it. With pre-construction, you pretty much do buy sight unseen. You're looking at a floor plan and you're walking into a sales center that has no real representation of what you're actually buying. It's all just drawings and images, so it is pretty much just sight unseen. You're just tricking yourself into thinking you're seeing something when you walk into a sales center. The most important thing there is talking to your sales rep and understanding what you're actually getting into and making sure you're making the best decision. And you can do that without leaving your house. So I'm gonna see that, you know, developers are gonna spend much less money on sales centers and much more money 
on 3D immersive experiences and all of that flash you can possibly throw at the di in, in the in the digital space to help buyers connect with whatever their project they're selling. Uh, price per square foot, I mean, won't take a hit, can't take a hit. Land is purchased at a certain price that needs to sell at a certain price for it to be viable. Developers are going to hang on to that land until they can. Um, so I don't see any real price discounts there. What we might see a lot of are developers uh, charging um, uh, sorry, not charging. Developers offering uh, certain, uh, you know, preferable terms and incentives like rental guarantees and other things or maintenance free, free for a year. You know, things like that might come out. But we'll see what happens after all these condos start to launch later into the, uh, I guess, into the summer and into the fall. We'll see how those condo launches perform, and then, you know, I'll do a recap to this video, a follow up to this video to see where that ends up. So. Pre-construction outside of the core, I think, is going to start to do very well. We just had a project launch last week. They released 59 units and around $600 per square foot, including parking, and they did very well with sales. So surprisingly, there are a lot of people out there still buying. Um, so there won't be any many launches right now. A lot of them are going to be in the fall. We'll keep you posted on what's happening there. You know, and the, here's the big money question. Will prices go down? I mean, Toronto's urban communities, if you've been following my, my weekly updates, they haven't seen significant decline in prices as of, you know, recording this or, or writing this. Um, that should remain constant as long as the uh, majority of job losses remain, um, uh, you know, outside of the demographic of the typical home buyer. Um, right now, it's affected the rental market tremendously. A lot of hospitality jobs, a lot of entry-level jobs have been lost um, or furloughed, I guess. Um, you know, they may trend down for specific types of properties. You know, the luxury market is there, there's some value there. If you're in that $2 million plus range, there could be an opportunity for you to be in the driver's seat as a buyer. Um, aren't too many more buying opportunities there. Um, some condos that are really investor heavy uh, with investors on loading units that they can no longer Airbnb or they just don't want to be a landlord anymore. So there are a handful of buildings, a handful of communities where there are some opportunities, but there are no sweeping discounts across the board. Um, I'm really comfortable with the way our um, you know, tech industry is going right now. We have Shopify here that as of this morning is Canada's most um, expensive, most uh, uh, expensive, doesn't seem like the right word. Anyway, expensive company uh, beating out RBC is the top company in Canada. Sure, the valuations are different, you know, 48 times, 48x for Shopify and 1.8x for RBC. It's very different uh, worlds. But overall, there are a lot of tech companies that are still in hiring mode. Shopify is going to double their workforce by 2021. And there are a lot of other companies that are in that same boat. So I don't base what's going to happen to real estate based on how many brick and mortar storefronts I see closing. There's going to be a lot of that happening. There's going to be a lot of media reporting, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, the heart and soul of these communities is being sucked out. They're going to be replaced by fresh new businesses that didn't have to weather the shitstorm that, was of the, that, that we had been going through. A lot of these businesses just cannot get through, um, you know, three, four, five, six months of no cash flow, especially the ones that didn't pivot. Um, and, you know, become grocery hubs for their community or whatever it is. But even that doesn't provide enough cash flow. So there's going to be a lot of, of that news coming out. There's going to be another negative news cycle, which does affect um, buyer confidence. But right now, buyer confidence remains fairly high. And um, people are buying, people are selling, and businesses are thriving, despite some that you might see who aren't. A lot of restaurants are not going to be around. A lot of retail mom and pop retails are not going to be around after this, but they'll be replaced with new ones. Um, so anyway, that's sort of the world's longest video.